Today we'll take a look at the remaster of Destroy All Humans and see if it's actually worth your precious free time. Let me be upfront in saying that I'm slightly biased because I love the original game. It's one of my favorite titles on the PS2. In fact, it was one of the few games that I replayed on that console more than once. Let's take a look at the basics. The plot of this game is simple. You play Cryptosporidium-137, an alien clone from the planet of Furon, and you've come to Earth because Cryptosporidium-136, the previous version of you, has crash-landed there, and your job is to find your clone and recover any lost technology. Oh, and it also seems you can mine humans for Furon DNA, because due to some previous events of long, long ago, humans contain pure Furon DNA. But I'll let you play the game to find out how that happened and why that is. In this title, there are just six areas to explore and you're gonna visit them again and again because there are over 20 missions to do. Keep in mind though, this is not really an open world game. Most of those 20 plus levels are fairly short and you're gonna breeze right through them if you choose not to poke around while you're there. Don't worry about being done too quickly though because there is a mode in this version where you can explore those six areas freely outside of the missions and you can collect things, do some challenges, and all of those will earn you credits that you can use to upgrade your gear and your ship. I found the controls to be a bit wonky in some cases, especially with targeting. Now, there is a new lock-on button, but honestly, it doesn't work very well, and that can get very frustrating when you're trying to take care of some of those secondary challenges on some of the levels. An interesting thing about this game is that everything has been updated and polished except the dialogue. Or let me explain. It seems the developers have used all of the original voice tracks. So you're getting jokes and commentary from 2005 all shoved into a game that's being put out in 2020. I think that's just fine for someone who bought and played the original game, but it makes me wonder how a teenager of today will feel about some of the gags that were intended for 15 years ago. I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to see the land our forefathers fought and died for fall under the boot of the creeping red menace. Not on my watch. Here's the quick breakdown. As far as length goes, the title is a bit short, but the price tag is smaller too, so I think it all kind of balances out. The story is one of the best parts of this game. Rarely in a title of today do you get to be the villain, and this game doesn't hold back in how evil against mankind you really get to be. Gameplay could use some love in some places. There's a lack of instruction for some stuff you gotta do, and the targeting department really could use some help. Music and sound effects are right out of an old-time UFO invasion film, and the graphics have been pumped way up from the original game. As far as fun goes, I think how fun this game is for you will depend on your need for deepness of a video game. It's a simple story, but it's a fun idea, and you can also run about all the different areas and read people's minds, or pop their minds right out of their heads. You can even give all of the humans anal probes. Both of those things give you credit to spend on your upgrades, by the way, so you're kind of encouraged to do them. So how deep of an experience this game is, is completely up to you. I had a lot of fun playing it all again, being jazzed up from the original, and honestly, it's a game I'm probably gonna play more than once. 